Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day today and we're gonna talk about some DuPont wires. These wires come in every single starter kit that you'll get for Arduino or electronics and they are absolutely critical to prototyping your creations. And prototyping is one of those things that I do for a living. And so I wanted to share with you some of my top tips and tricks for using these wires. And let's start off with tip number one, and that there are nine different types of these wires standardly. There's obviously a lot more than that, but uh, the first one we've got is the male to male. You've got a pin on both sides. We've got male to female. You've got a pin on one side and a hole on the other. And then finally you have hole and hole. And if you look at these, you'll see that typically they come in 30 centimeters, 20 centimeters, and 10 centimeters. And if you can afford it, I want to encourage you to get all nine types of these because they do come in handy. You don't really want to use more wire than you have to when you're trying to cram things in an enclosure. And you don't want to have to have all your things pressed in together when you're connecting to a breadboard. So it's nice to have long wires, short wires, and then most typically you'll use medium wires. And uh, you know what, if you can only afford one set, I would encourage you to get all three gender combinations in the 20 centimeter. Of course, I'll have links to these in the description. Tip number two is that technically there are 10 standard ones. And the last one is this molded um, male to male wire. These come in some of the better kits and you can buy them on places like Amazon and they look the same. They both have male pins, but these pins are a lot more durable. They can be bent a little bit better. They, um, you don't really have to worry about the uh, connector slipping apart and everything like that. Just generally, all you need to know is that if you do come across these kinds of cables with the little molded ends on them, you wanna save them because they're the best of the bunch. And speaking of bending, for tip number three, if you do happen to bend these pins, I highly recommend that you just go ahead and get rid of the cable. The problem is these are just not made to bend very many times. You might get one or two bends out of them, and then this end can snap off really easily. And it's not uncommon for that end to snap off right inside of one of these connectors. And I've found it to be uh, a combination of difficult to nearly impossible to get that pin out if you do manage to break it off in something like this. So if these things bend, go ahead and get rid of them. Tip number four is to not use these DuPont wires in breadboards more than you have to. I mean, they're obviously fine. They will do the job and all that kind of stuff. But as you can see, this gets pretty unwieldy. You're moving things around really easy to unplug something, hard to figure out where it was before once you do. And so again, it's fine to use these on breadboards, but try to keep it to a minimum. And the alternative, are these little pre-shaped, really cheap jumper wires that are already bent to be flat and to fit flat on your breadboard. And you can see something like this, where what I've done is I've used the, um, the short wires to connect every one of these buttons to ground. And then I would come in here with something like this and connect to my Arduino. And that allows me to um, keep all these wires neat. I'm not trying to jump over a whole bunch of a mess of wires here. I've got a nice neat connection that's not gonna fall out of my breadboard and I'm only using DuPonts when I really need to. And tip number five, this is kind of a bonus, but you might not know this if you get working on these things. As you can see, I've got button to ground, button to ground, button to ground over here. But if you notice, I had to do a little jumper here and that is because there is a break on the markings of these breadboards. And the reason for that is because this part of the breadboard here this part over here is not actually connected to this part here. This part here is not connected there. So if you are using a breadboard, you need to jumper these if you want your grounds to be continuous. Now it's actually kind of a feature that they're not connected on the power side because you may decide that, hey, I wanna have five volts here and 12 volts here and 3.3 volts here and nine volts here. Um, and you can have all that on the same breadboard because these aren't connected. But if you are doing a typical project where it's all five volts or all 3.3, you actually need to use a little DuPont wire or a jumper wire to connect these halves of the breadboard. All right, when it comes to storing these things, you do you. But as for me and my house, we're gonna store them this way. As you can see, I've got these kind of cool cardboard containers here and I've got female to female, the three varieties in the three sizes right here, just in drawers. And these are my full batches. So as you can see, that'd be female to male, 10 centimeters. So any ones that I haven't really pulled apart too much go in there like that. We've got male to male. These are 20 centimeters. They go up here. And then what I do for the ones that I've actually used, 
Um, I take them and just throw them in here. As you can see, I've got a couple full ones in there. But as for my messy wires, they just all go in these drawers right here. And this is what's actually over there in the area that I prototype. So I reach for these first and a lot of times they go into the projects and stay there. Um, but as I strip down projects and as I take apart old projects, they go in here. That allows me to keep nice, neat inventory in these drawers. This is kind of extra stuff here. But when it's time to put them away, female to female, 30 centimeters, I know right where they go. I know how many new ones I have. Um, a lot of times when I do projects for a client, I might build five or 10 of something and I need to use the same color wires for everything. So I'm going to take an entire set of black through that brown color for each project. And, uh, you know, I might have a whole bunch of the last couple colors left over because I didn't need them, but my wires need to be consistent. So I store them like this, new over here, used over here, and it's just really handy. Tip number seven is if you decide that you want to crimp these things yourself, I highly recommend you getting a good pair of crimpers and the right pair of crimpers. Basically, um, most of what's out there on Amazon and AliExpress is absolute crap. There are only two that I would consider getting. And uh, even though these are both... Uh, very similar looking. This one is actually not for DuPont exactly. If you're going to get uh, crimpers, then you either want the iWIS or iCrimp uh, SN28Bs or um, a little bit more expensive. These are made in Japan. They have an orange uh, handle on them now, but these are the PA09. I'll have links to the exact ones in the description. I think I like these a little bit better. They're a little bit more finicky, but they're they're smaller in the hand and they're kind of these connectors as you'll see in a minute are um, a little bit uh, tiny to deal with. And I just find that using the giant crimpers are is just a little obnoxious. And so I kind of like these a little bit better. I am not going to do a full crimping tutorial in this video. There are plenty of those online. I want to talk about the things that nobody else talks about. Tip number eight, if you decide to crimp yourself, I highly recommend that you buy a case of these shells with all the different sizes. We've got individual ones. We've got fours and fives and ones that are two rows and ones that are single rows. And then if you really do find yourself doing it a bunch, um, then I buy in packs of a hundred. These are the individual ones. And I just kind of dump them in there and refill. Um, these are doubles. I will dump them in there and refill when I use the ones that I have. And then you can buy these pins in bulk. Um, as you can see here, it's got rows and rows and rows of pins in both male and female. Um, I do recommend you buying the kit of shells. I recommend you buying this stuff in bulk, but do not buy the kit because it comes with the crimpers. Get the crimpers separately and get the exact ones that you need. You don't ruin your experience by getting crappy crimpers. Tip number nine is to use pre-made cables whenever possible. I manufacture a product in relatively small quantities that uses this OLED screen and connects it to this circuit board. And um, as you can see, I'm using a pre-made uh, DuPont cable. And what I love about it is that they're pre-made. I don't have to sit there and mess around with it. Now, of course, I could take a whole bunch of these DuPont wires and just rip off the right number of wires and connect them one at a time. But this is no must, no fuss. And it's really easy to remember that the red side goes toward VCC. And so everybody around just knows red toward VCC, you plug it in and you are done. And so this cable saves me time, saves me energy, saves me hassle in making sure that all these things are the right direction, still using DuPont, still get all the flexibility of it, but I'm not sitting here making custom cables. But let's say you truly do need a custom cable like uh, one of these two by three. So you've got two rows of three. Um, you could try to find something like that online, but maybe you need crossovers. Maybe you need things in specific orders. That is when I actually like to take pre-made cables and I like to take one of these Cricut weeding tools. And if you know anybody who does Cricut, those little vinyl things, um, they drop these on the floor all the time. And when they do, they actually give you this absolutely perfect bend. I'm not joking. When they fall on the floor, they bend like this. And what that allows you to do is to come in here. Now you could use a sewing needle or something like that, but you find the side of these cables that has the little opening and you come in here and that will just perfectly pull that up just a little bit to where you can slide that out and then you take that thing and you slide it straight in and you can make, oh, that's what happened. It went up a little high there. You can slide that in the little shell here and just pull as long as I got all the way, yeah, pull it in there. And now you have a perfectly custom cable where you can just put the wires in, in whatever order 
makes the most sense to you and have your own custom cables without having to search all over Amazon. And so like, if you want a space over here, we're gonna put it in and just make sure you're getting all the way down to the end there and push that in there and voila, you have a custom cable. You just pull it till you hear the click. There we go. So um, custom cables, DuPont the easy way. Tip number 11 is to remember that at the end of the day, these are just wires. And so let's say you've got a project where you need a whole bunch of things to go to ground. Every single button needs to go to ground. Every single switch needs to go to ground. Every single LED needs to go to ground. And you've got to hook all these things up. You might only have one pin on your board or something like that. Uh, remember, you can twist all these things together and you can solder them. You can twist all these things together and you can use something like one of these cheap terminals. I'll show you. So I've got these little cheap spring terminals here. They're super cheap on AliExpress. You just come in here, you push the wire this way, and obviously we've got a little bit extra um, pinched out there, but you can just stick something like this in the middle um, and that will get you a bunch of wires. You can use something like these little Wagos where the, you'd use these little connectors. These are a little bit more expensive, but they're also a little bit more permanent. I've shipped these all over the world, um, you know, especially low voltage. Who cares? You put this in there and this is just, it's not coming out. It is not coming out. It will be perfectly fine to connect this to your Arduino here and to all your other sensors here. You can use butt splice connectors. You can use anything made for joining wires. You can use those gel splice connectors. Uh, anything you want to connect these wires and make your own custom crazy versions of these things. Now, the definition of rapid changes from person to person. And when I talk about rapid prototyping, I mean that oftentimes the project actually leaves my office the same day that the idea is presented to me. So I go from never having heard of it to having something out the door same day. And so on something like this, this is a uh, device, just looks like an LED, but we've got an ethernet port over here. We have a misaligned port because it didn't line up with the case. Uh, but this is an ethernet based edge device to tell people in a factory what an AI is doing. And so, um, you know, this just had to work. It was a proof of concept. And as you can see, as you look down there, uh, there's not a ton, usually I put a lot more, but there is hot glue, um, both gluing this wire to the actual board and to the case and this thing made it thousands of miles has been bounced all over the place and uh traveled and worked just fine and that hot glue is key for one you need something to be semi-permanent you know i've gotten this one back i'm going to repurpose it eventually but uh this glue is what allowed me to put this thing in a box and know that it was going to work when i got there so they talk about the stages of grief. Let me tell you about the stages of glue. Uh, when I create something like this, let's say that in this situation, the middle two wires are signal. And let's say that for my project, they need to crisscross so that they go straight through on one side, but that these two middles have to um, flip over. So what I would tend to do in something like that while I'm prototyping is that at that stage, if I don't make a custom cable, like I just showed you earlier, what I would actually do is take just a little bit of glue and actually stripe it right across here. I'm not trying to connect it to anything else. All I'm doing is connecting it right there to try to keep these wires in order. And then I have a little Ryobi fan. And when you're done, you have something that is roughly in the right order. It's gonna line up, but I need to plug it in again. Um, the glue isn't fully dry, but when I need to plug it in again, everything is gonna roughly line up. I don't have to keep worrying about these things flipping over. They're in the right order and everything is great. And then when it is time to actually ship something like this, then what I will do is I'll try to melt my old glue and I'm gonna come in here and connect these two like this. The other thing I like to do is to add some hot glue up here and add some hot glue over here so that these wires don't accidentally pull out. Let's say you're yanking on the thing. You don't want the wire to come out the back of the shell. Obviously, I would do it on the other side, and that will allow this thing to survive all kinds of shipping. I've shipped them all over the world this way, and it's fine. Uh, it's not pretty. It's not awesome, but it does work, and it does allow me to not think twice about whether the wire is connected when it gets to where it needs to go. Most importantly about the hot glue is that although it holds really well, it is not permanent. I either take uh, isopropyl alcohol in a bottle like this, or you can get one of these little uh, pin bottles. I'll have links to those in the description, but you can put it in here and let it sit for 10 or 15 seconds. It's not gonna destroy your electronics or anything like that. Let it sit for a couple of seconds. And then 
you can just get in here with your fingernail and take it right off. And as you can see now, this will disconnect just cleanly and you can come right up here and just be a little gentle, but clean as a whistle. Your wires are back to the way they were. They can be put in whatever order they need to go for your next step. Tip number 14 is as much as I like DuPont wires and as handy as they are, if I'm going to be doing a lot of prototyping, I actually like to switch over to these screw terminals. So with these, you can just come in here and you can fold the wire in half if you want and you can just screw them in here. But I actually like to use these little things if I'm gonna to go to screw terminals. Uh, you can drop in these little, they're little ferrule type things that you put over the edge of the wire and use these little kind of cool square crimpers. Then once you've got that all crimped, you can come in here and stick it in the terminal strip and screw it down and you get kind of a more permanent connection that's easier to switch around. But tip number 15 is that these things actually work really well with screw terminals. So you can come in here if you've got some wires, you don't need to crimp those things on here. You just put them right in screw terminals. And I find that they actually work really, really well um, for prototyping that way. So it's another way to get a little bit more permanent connection. Tip number 16, and it may seem like a stretch, but I promise you it's not, is that I use these DuPont wires to connect directly to circuit boards and motherboards all the time. The main reason for that is that I find when I solder wires um, like what's inside of these things directly to a motherboard, you get moving around and they snap off. But if you solder something like this, it can handle the connection a lot better. As you can see, that's just sticking right through there. I'm uh, This is crimped up here and molded really well, and that allows me to kind of jump around and move things. So if I am composite modding an Atari, if I'm making a new cable connector for like a keyboard to a motherboard or something like that, I use DuPont wires all the time. The wires inside are stranded, the connections are solid, and you're able to make a really nice custom cable using these DuPont wires. And so if I have to solder a wire to a motherboard and there's a through hole, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna use a DuPont. Tip number 17, this is something I actually did this week. I had this custom CPLD chip and I had to make this custom adapter and wire it up to a custom USB cable. And I had DuPont wires all over the place and I wish you could see underneath here. We've got all kinds of wires bodged together under those things. And then eventually I broke it out to some DuPont wires and then eventually that went to a programmer and all that kind of stuff. But I did all that to just make a proof of concept that this was possible. And then when I was done, I turned it into an actual PCB with the sponsor of this video, PCB Way. Now you may think that PCB design is outside of your abilities, but I've got a 45 minute video where I show you from beginning to end how to take an idea from a project and turn it into something that you can actually hold with your hand. And that's the beauty of PCB Way. These boards cost me five bucks. I think I got 11 of them or something like that. And I took my project from this mess of wires and DuPont wires and turned it into something that is perfect perfect for my needs. This is the ultimate video converter. It converts all kinds of computer videos from one to another with all kinds of prototyping using all the skills that we've talked about in this video. And I did it with the help of PCB Way. And they sponsor this channel. They keep the whole thing going. And this is not just a, hey, I'm going to shove a PCB in a video. When you're done with all these DuPont wires and you want to immortalize the project that you've made, PCB Way is the way to do it. And I will link to them in the description and a link to my video that will show you in 45 minutes how to use KiCad and take an idea from an idea all the way to a PCB that you can hold in your hands. And last but not least, this is probably my favorite, is that there are more than just male to female DuPont connectors. You can actually get DuPont to all kinds of other things. And so these are some DuPont to banana plugs or you can connect this straight to your meter so you can have a meter just in line in your thing and not be messing around with probes. You can get DuPont to these uh, little alligator clips and I make DuPont to RCA. I make DuPont to all different kinds of things. You don't have to just go uh, DuPont to male or female. There's all kinds of other options that you can get creative with and you can make custom cables. You can buy custom cables to do all the other cool things that you need to do. So those are my top 18 tips for using DuPont wires. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you've got some things that I missed, feel free to put them in the comments. And hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day.